Hi students again. We are doing the last unit on topic three, health and well-being. So it's lesson number five and um, we are looking at um, water and safety uh, units. The subject up outcome is to explain water safety measures, the importance, of uh, making sure that uh, you behave in a certain way when you are in water or around water. So there are three learning outcomes. Learning outcome number one, you need to identify potential risk situations near water or in water. Explain safety measures to avoid water accidents. And describe uh, first aid skills to assist a near drowning victim or a drowning victim. So let us look at the situation in water or near water. Remember when we started um, module three, we have explained the situation, uh, although we're dealing with the situation uh, in sexual uh, behavior context here. Again, it's still uh, saying one and the same thing, except that here we are looking at the situation in water. A situation is a situation where there is a potential danger. So that's a situation. So there are so many examples of a situation. So for an example, a sea with a strong current or undercurrent is a situation. So when we refer to a current, uh, we refer to the strong flow of water. A strong current refers to strong flow of water above the surface. Yet the undercurrent refers to the strong flow of water below the surface. Both underlying strong current can pull a person down or out to the sea and can lead to drowning. You can really drown. You mustn't undermine the current if it's small. It can take you. It can kill you. So what is drowning? Drowning, it is going under the water and being unable to breathe or get a swallowing a lot of water and choking. A, another example, consume alcohol or drugs can enable you to see risk in water no swim properly. So it's also a risk situation to drink alcohol or do drugs and then you go to the pool or to the sea or to the dam. Dive into shallow water, you can break your neck and become unconscious. When you refer to unconscious, uh, it's being unaware or knocked out. You are being knocked out. Get into deep water if you can't swim or swimming in a dam or a pool without knowing how deep it is. It's also a situation. If you do not know about the currents and tides when you get into a water, it can also become risky. A, a tide will refer to the rising and falling of the sea every after 12 hours. That's why we've got low tides and high tides. Some people, they, they say... I, the sea um, is calm, so that's why uh, we can see low tides. And when people see high tides, they say, hey, 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 the sea is very, very angry. Something is not right. Yeah, some are superstitions, you know, but we cannot question people's belief except just to listen and to understand and accept. So remember, we'll do chapter four, citizenship, or we'll do cultural diversity. And then uh, another situation, uh, when you swim in an area where there is no lifeguard, it's a risky. A lifeguard is a person whose job is to make sure that swimmers are safe. If you do not listen to warnings given by lifeguards, or ignore warning signs that can also be risky. Do not tease others uh, by pushing them into the water. If you do that, you can put their life in danger or in risk. 
uh, don't cross the river that is full of flooding. It is a, res, uh, a situation. If you cross the river that is full or the river that is flooding. Swim in the water that is not clean. It's also very risky because uh, there might be a contaminated by bacteria or it can be water, a sewage water or water with chemicals. If you use motorized water equipment without knowing how to steer or break speed limits or without a life jacket, it's also a risk situation, meaning uh, make sure that you know what you are doing in water. Then let's look at number two. Explain safety measures to avoid water accident and dangers. Most water accidents are preventable only swim in a mud bathing area. Yellow means you can swim. Red means danger. We know we always uh, associate a red with danger. Learn how to swim. It's also important. Always follow the safety rules. Don't consume alcohol or take drugs while on boat or before swimming. If you are living with a medical condition like epilepsy, feeds, wear a medical alert bracelet or swim with a partner who will be able to help you if you have a scissor or if you encounter any problem. Do not swim if you do, do not know the depth of the water. Only cross rivers where there is a safe road or path. Always watch children near water or in water. Supervise them 24-7. Children can really get out of hand if they are unattended, left unattended. Always use life jackets if you go on a boat. Listen to all warnings, including shark, shark warnings. If they tell you that do not swim here, they might be a danger. There are sharks, no matter how big or small, uh, please uh, listen. If a large wave comes suddenly, try to dive, dive under the wave. It's safe. Do not uh, try to dive above. If you are caught in a rip current, don't panic. Never swim against the current. You'll get tired. Always be safe near in water or in water, even if uh, you know how to swim. There are those people who take advantage of I can swim, only to find that a small tide can sweep the person away. So let us look at safety measures to rescue a drowning victim and prevent further accident. You need to be trained if you want to rescue a drowning victim. If not, you might end up drowning yourself too. You see, you're trying to help someone and you ended up, you know, also uh, drowning. So... Rescue items such as uh, flotation devices are used by lifeguards to rescue a drowning people. What is a floating device? Uh, are those objects that float on water such as tubes, ropes, uh, blanks, etc. So uh, you need to think twice to avoid real danger if a person is drowning. You must act fast. If there are a number of people at the water site, you can make human chain by holding hands together in order to reach the drowning victim. Do not panic. Don't scream. Remain calm in order to help the victim. Because if you panic, a victim might do something, you know, dangerous. Or might get shocked. Or, you know... Yeah, do something uh, 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 without even thinking because now you are scaring the victim. So now let us describe first aid skills to assist a near drowning victim. Remember, I told you that you need to be qualified. If you are not qualified, try to get someone who can help, who is qualified. Handle the victim with great care. No crown... Uh, no crowd around the victim. A victim uh, uh, needs a. You need to provide a. I'm sorry about uh, no crowd. A no crowd. 
around the victim unless if we are trying to make sure that a, 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 a the victim are uh, uh, there is is still in water, but once the victim is out of water, please provide a. The ABC of drowning phase eight are away, breathe, and resuscitation. Away means send the victim's body to the side. Water will come out of the mouth uh, automatically, and to free the away. And gently leave the chin to op open the airway. Breathe. Give mouth-to-mouth -mouth res resuscitation. Resuscitation means a, a revival or bringing back to life. We know that, you know, the story of Jesus, those that are Christians. So pinch the victim's nose closed and breathe strongly four times into mouth. It will help to clear airways and lungs. Repeat as needed and turn the victim on the side again. If you have to do it over and over, please do it, as you can see. And then circulation. Circulation, uh, it means give CPR or a chest compression. CPR is cardiopulmonary resistance hesitation, mouth-to-mouth -mouth resp respiration, and chest compression. Pushing on the chest, you must push in order uh, to make sure that uh, uh, this will uh, move blood to vital organs such as brain or heart. So to keep an injured person alive until help arrives, you only do it if the victim is not breathing. If the victim is breathing, you rush the victim to hospital. How to do CPR? Carefully turn the victim on, the, on their back. Put your palm on the victim's chest. Don't press on the ribs. Allow the chest to rise between pushes. When you get to 20, you can count up to 20. And then you give the victim two deep breaths. Repeat CPR if the victim is still not breathing or is still uh, a, a, a unconscious. So drive to hospital once the victim is breathing. The victim will need medical care even if the victim is conscious and breathing. Medical workers will pump out all the remaining water in the lungs because if the water is not pumped out, it will cause infection or heart attack or even pneumonia. So let us uh, do a revision by looking at these three exam preparation questions. One, please understand the APCD of water rescue stands for. Uh, identify five potential risk situations near or in water and explain four safety measures uh, to avoid water accident. Thank you very much. Hope uh, you have uh, enjoyed the chapter. So it is the end of the chapter, uh, the situation near water or in water.